Hello everybody. In this BioWorks graphic design lesson you can learn to make 3D vector pie charts. The vector pie chart you see here is what you will learn to design in this video lesson. Create new BioWorks document PNG and I'm going to make my width about 1200 and my height maybe 700. Resolution 72 OK. I'm going to make my canvas white and the first thing I'll do is go to my shapes and grab an ellipse and I'm going to hold shift as I draw my ellipse and if you want to have your tooltips go to view and make sure tooltips is selected then you'll have those little numbers next to your mouse like I do now I'm gonna draw my ellipse out holding shift as I draw to make sure it stays in a perfect circle and I can make it any size that I want but I want to make sure it has even numbers so 542 that's fine just as long as the numbers are even now I'm gonna take it drag it to the middle and I'll see it when it's in the middle I'll see a line show up letting me know that I'm in the exact middle of my canvas then I'm gonna grab another ellipse and that's gonna be a very small one in the center of that one you can make it any size turn it black and then just take the width make it about 8 and the height about 8 as well because you just want it to be a small dot now you grab that dot you can move it around within that bigger ellipse and you put it in the center you'll see when it's in the center you'll have a little crosshair show up then let go right there then you'll know you're in the dead center of that bigger ellipse now we can start drawing in our colored pie shapes or wedges so we'll grab the pen tool and we'll start right here somewhere down on this angle you can start any angle that you want really click down let go then go to the very center of the black dot click down let go and then make any angle that you want for that pie shape I'll make mine about like that click down let go for the last line let's connect it all and when you click down this time hold it and drag the line and you can make it bulge out a little so it's not up in the shape like that you want it outside the yellow shape if you left it like that it would be inside the yellow shape it wouldn't make a, a nice wedge that you need so just bulge it out it doesn't even have to match the curve of the inner shape or the curve of this ellipse that we started with because we're gonna crop it anyway to match that curve perfectly now you can take that and make it the color that you want it to be. So I'll make that one green. Now I'm going to make my next pie shape using that same method. So I'll hit the pen tool and I'll go here next to this point or basically right on top of this point. I'll click down, let go, and then I'll go to the center again. Click down, let go, and then make any angle that you want once again. Click down, let go, and on the last point when you connect everything, hold and drag and then you can make that shape any color you want let's make that one brrr. and if it has an edge on it you can take that edge off okay now I'm gonna make one more wedge using that same method okay so I have all of my wedges in place and your angles don't have to be precise for this type of graphic because in the end they're gonna be pulled apart a little bit anyway now to get these cut out to where they're a more precise wedge shape is simple you can just grab the yellow shape in the back press control C and control V now you've just placed a copy of it on top of itself. Take the new copy of the yellow shape, hold down control shift and hit your up arrow key. Holding control shift and hitting your up arrow key is bring to front or you can use these buttons up here. It does one of these does bring to front. And once you have that in the front, you can select it and the shape that you want to crop by holding shift to select them together. You can hold shift to select things together. So I have those two items selected. I'm going to go up to modify, combine paths and crop. I'm going to highlight the yellow shape again. Control C, Control V, bring it to front. Control Shift, up arrow key, and then hit it and the shape that I want to crop and modify, combine paths, crop. Last one for the green one. Control C, Control V, bring the yellow shape to front, the new yellow shape. Then we'll highlight it and the piece that we want to crop. Modify, combine paths, crop. Now we'll punch this last shape because it's still a solid ellipse a full ellipse but you don't want to really move it I was just showing you what I have there but we want to punch that one out so what we'll do is grab the pen tool and we'll start right here then we'll go up to the center click down let go follow this red line up click down let go and then just make a shape that goes all the way around and you'll have something like that and it, it, it doesn't even have to be very precise so what you can do is grab this and this shape together go to modify combine paths and punch so now you don't want to move yours but I'll show you what I have okay I'll put those all back where they were 
And what I'll do is zoom in. I'll select one of these and zoom in on it. And I'll click that black dot in the center and press Control X to get it out of there. And you can zoom in by holding Control and mouse wheel. When you have any object selected, you zoom in on it. Now, what you'll do is highlight all of those items together and move them over to the side over here. And you'll want to keep those in case the angles and the depth that you create is not exactly what you want. So you want to keep this one kind of as a master. So you press Control C, Control V, copy all of those things. And we'll move them over to the side over here. Now, what we're going to do with all of these selected is we'll go up into the Distort tool while they're all still selected. And then we'll cock it on, a, on its side. So we'll make the sphere looks like it's laying at a 3D perspective. And you can really drag it to be any 3D view or perspective that you want. Now I'll go up to my pointer tool. They're all still selected. I can just grab them and move them anywhere I want to put them. Now let's make sure those four items are highlighted. And we'll go to filters, shadow and glow, solid shadow. And we'll make it a solid color. We'll just make it like a gray at first. Now what you're going to want to do is change the angle and the distance. So you put the angle to where it's going down, something like that. Around uh, 270 is straight down, 90 is straight up. But you can really choose any angle that you want. And the distance, let's just make that a little bit greater. So something like that. That way you have nice thick pie wedges. And you press OK. Now the ones that should be on the front, we're going to bring those to front. For instance, this blue one should be front. So let's press control, hold control, shift, and hit the up arrow key on that blue one. Now everything looks pretty good. It looks like a 3D disc. But if you were to take these and move these now, you'll see what you have. You have like chunks now. But don't move them. You can leave them in a nice shape like that until the end. Now for each one of these, you want to make sure there's solid shadow, and you have to do it separately or else they'll get the same color. So what you'll do is you select one. I have the green one selected. I'm going to go to its solid shadow. I'm going to change it from gray to green. Press OK. And you can even make it a little bit of a darker green if you like. So let's go to solid shadow again. And let's darken this green just a little bit. OK. Then press OK and there. Now I'll do the same thing to the blue one. Solid shadow. Make it match this blue. Then highlight it again. Go to the color wheel and make it just a tad bit darker. OK. OK. Now do the same thing to the red. And now finally the yellow. Now let's select the green one once again. And let's go to its fill. Change it from solid to gradient ellipse. And let's put the ellipse where the brightest point of the white on the ellipse is right in the middle. And what you can do is you can make that a bright green if you like instead of a white. Instead of solid white it could be like a bright green like that. And then you adjust your ellipse. So you hold one point and hold shift so your ellipse is perfect. If you hold shift your ellipse will grow in proportion. Do it to where it about hits the edge. Right about there. The blue one I'll do the same thing. Go to solid fill, change it to gradient ellipse and put that right in the center there and then change from white to a very very bright blue. Looks like it even needs to be brighter than that. So let's brighten that up a little bit. OK. And then you can manipulate the ellipse by holding shift and dragging one end until it about reaches the end there. I'm going to do the same thing to the red and the yellow. And for the yellow one, I'm just going to use white in the center. So I'll go to ellipse and I'll leave it white. And then I'll just make the ellipse grow until it's about more towards the edge like the other ones. Maybe that's too much for that one right about something like that. Now let's take these and move them slightly apart and you can use your arrow keys if you don't want to move them too much. You can highlight one and just move it up a little bit then move it over using your arrow keys. Do the same thing to the red one. Just move it out, down maybe. Same to the blue and then you can you can really just drag them if you want. Let's move the blue over this way a little bit. I'm going to highlight all of these again independently. So I'll start with the green one and I'm going to give it a new filter shadow and glow inner shadow. I'm going to make sure the angle on the inner shadow is coming from the bottom of the pie shape. So you can see my black inner shadow is on the bottom of the piece. I'm going to make it come up a little higher into that piece and then make it spread or fade 
into it a little bit better. Something like that. And you can take the opacity down a little bit if you don't want it so dark. So I'm going to do that for the others as well. Making sure that the shadow is always coming from the bottom up. And that gives you something like that. Now you can really take a lot more time to put a lot of effects on these things. And you can even put lines here. And you can put white shapes if you wanted these to have a more jelly-like appearance. But I want mine to have a more plastic cut look. So I want it to look like a plastic pie that's just cut up. Plastic or metal or whatever. I don't want it to look like jelly. I can go and grab this green one and zoom in by holding control and mouse wheeling in. And I could make a line, just a very basic line by dragging it from one end to the other where I want it to live. And then I can change it to be any color I want, like that dark green right there. So you see what that does? It gives my little shape more of an edge if you want to have those on there. You can change the points. Just grab it, hit the sub-selection tool, and move these points if you don't get them precisely where you want them. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that's the yellow one. All I need is one line here for the red one. Let's see what we have now. So you can see they look a little more cut and clean now. And this one is actually a little bit too dark. Let's lighten that up a little. You don't want them too dark. And if you make them too light, you won't be able to see them. Now you can grab all of these shapes together by making a box around them like this. Make sure you don't hit this yellow one over here. Just grab all these shapes. And then you can press Control G to make a group out of them. Now you can move the whole group around. Let's get this thing out of the way a little bit over there. Now you can just move this group around anywhere you want. Now when we shrink this down, it won't have any jagged edges or anything. It'll look really sharp since we made it pretty big. And we're not going to have it that big on a web page. When we shrink it down to be the size it needs to be on a web page, it's going to look smooth. So what I'll do is I'll just draw a rectangle. Maybe something like that. And I want to have a fill of gradient radial. And I'll just make it gray where it is red there. Something like that. And then I'm going to highlight my nice little 3D pie chart. Press Control C, Control V, bring it over here, bring to front, Control Shift, up arrow key, and then hit Modify, Flatten Selection. Now it's a flattened bitmap. So now when I shrink it, it'll look really good. So I'll go to Scale Tool, shrink it down to the size it needs to display on the web, and right about like that. Now I can highlight it, and then go to Filters, Shadow and Glow, and Drop Shadow on the whole thing. And I'm going to make it drop a little bit further. And I don't want my shadow so dark. So I'll bring the opacity. I like that. And if you want, you can even take the little shape of the speech bubble. Where is that? Talking. Put it up there. Shrink it to the size it needs to be. Whatever size you want it to be. Move it there. And you can grab this point and move it around. So you have something like that. And then you can put numbers in there or words, or whatever you want. 